Hello friends, it is Monday which means it's time for another what sold on eBay video and a weekly update video from me. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Matt. I'm a full-time uh, reseller on eBay and every Monday I put out a video um, basically just kind of updating you guys about how my week went and then I show you guys what I sold on eBay for the week. This week we sold 22 items, so an average week, you know, not a bad one or not a good one, just an average one. And, um, and then I tell you guys, before we get into that, I kind of give you guys an update of how the week went. And uh, this week was a very interesting week. We had some incredible highs and we had a few lows. Um, but definitely the high uh, for this week was getting a shout out from Steve um, Alcorn, from Steve Alcorn Flips uh, is his YouTube channel. I'll put a, a link in the description below. But Steve and Scott the Beard Picker, who I'll also put a link to his channel below, they have a morning show where they just talk for a couple of hours just about reselling and you know share stories and stuff so it's an incredibly informative show and usually I don't get to watch it live um, usually because I'm out sourcing in the morning but I usually always watch the the recap basically uh, when he puts that video up so uh, this particular day that I got the shout out um, I was home that day I didn't go sourcing because my death pile has just grown to a huge amount so I was like well I'll just take the day off sourcing and just kind of get this death pile under control um so i was watching their show I, I caught the kind of the back end of the show and i was you know doing some ebay work and i, I right when i clicked on the show steve was in the middle of a sen sentence talking about oh there's a there were they were i guess the subject was they're trying to to come up with another show kind of like a panel or like interview some some other resellers on youtube and steve was talking about someone you know oh, there's a, a new guy that i'm watching uh he has less than a couple hundred subscribers so very new he's very new to ebay uh, but he's incredibly informative i had no idea who he was talking about because i caught it in the middle of the sentence and i was thinking oh this is somebody i would like to watch wherever he's talking about i want to watch this because this is kind of the situation that i'm in so i would love to see how that's going down so you know i come into the channel and he finishes the sentence and then i just type in the chat and, you know hello everybody greet everyone in the channel and he and steve goes oh there's MAT Retail now. There's Matt. That's the guy I was talking about. I was like, wow, um, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, you know, Steve said some very nice things, you know, that he, I couldn't believe that he actually watched my videos. So uh, definitely thanks to Steve for the shout out. I really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who subscribed from that uh, from that show, came over to the channel here and subscribe. Uh, we were almost to 100 subscribers now, which is crazy. We were like at 50 before that shout out so thanks to steve like i said i'll put a link to steve's channel and scott the bearded picker i, I watch scott the bearded pickers videos every every day they're incredibly informative as well love those videos but i'll put a link to their channels down below in the description so that was definitely the high of the week um another, another couple of nice things happened this week my favorite um saint vincent de paul um I love this St. Vincent de Paul. A lot of the things that you see here on the channel come from this one, St. Vincent de Paul. But recently, they purchased the building next door to them. They have kind of a small, a smaller building, and most of it is closed in that building. But they purchased the building next door, which is huge. Um, so they're going to make that their new store, and they've been working on that for like the last month. And the the, the pickings have been slim at the 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 original store because they've been taking all the stuff basically next door to fill up the other, the new store and I, I found out that the new store is going to be opening um, on October 15th so that's awesome um, really looking forward to that I've already let my wife know hey don't don't plan anything on this day because we're both gonna have to go up here because I'm sure it's stacked full of really awesome stuff because the the old store has really been slim pickings because they've been taking all the good stuff over there so that was some really good news. I'm excited for that uh, in the in the next seven days, I guess, in the next week. So excited for that. Also, the other store that I like a lot, which is uh, my what I'll call my honey hole, had a very interesting interaction there. So uh, this this other thrift store that I go to is just like a local thrift store. It's not a chain thrift store, and they do work with um, rescuing animals and stuff. So the thrift store is basically to pay for like rescuing animals and whatnot. That I go in there at least once or twice a week. It's run by, you know, a, a, an older, like a bunch of old ladies. And I go in there. They usually have a decent video, like video game selection, but they never have consoles. They never have like big electronics. If it's bigger than an alarm clock, they don't have it there. And I always wondered, 
like they get so many donations. I'm sure people are donating this stuff. And I always wonder, well, wonder where it goes. And I, I told my wife, I bet there's like a room in the back. It's just like the Holy Grail where they just throw all this stuff. And there's just going to be Nintendos piled up and, you know, DVD players and whatnot. So I went there, um, I think it was on Thursday or something. And they had a Wii U game, um, which is uncommon to see at a thrift store. So I picked it up and I was walking around the store and I saw one of the ladies that I see there every, almost every time I go there. And I asked her, I said, hey, you have this game. Do you have the console? And she says to me, I kid you not, no, we don't sell consoles here because, in her words, we're a bunch of old ladies. We don't know how to test that stuff. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, what, you know, what do you do with them? She said, well, we have a guy that comes here and picks all of our video game consoles up and takes them home and I guess tests them and then gives, you know, the ones that actually work, they, I guess he pays them, you know, a fair price for the ones that work. Right. And I was like, wow, that guy has an, you know, as a video game collector, that guy has a, a great setup here. And I said, okay. I said, well, I never really see you guys have like VCRs or DVD players or anything like that. She goes, oh, yeah, we don't, you know, like, she's like, like I said, we're a bunch of old ladies. We don't, we don't know how to test that stuff either. So we didn't want to, we don't want to sell it. So I kid you not, she says, we just throw that stuff in the dumpster. I was like, wow, okay. Um, I said to her, I said, well, I, you know, I'd be interested in buying that stuff. That stuff that I'm, you know, that I, that I like. I like older electronics. She said, oh, okay. She goes, well, we used to have a guy that would come to the store and just test their electronics for for them, and then he would buy the ones that would work. And she said, you know, that guy has since moved out of state for a few years now. We've never, you know, we've never found someone else. She said, how would you like to be, you know, how would you like to test this stuff for us? And then you can buy the ones that you want. So I'm thinking, yeah, this is going to be great. Awesome. She goes, you know, come on in the back room and I'll show you what I have. She's like, I got a couple of things. Come in the back and you can test them and see what you think. So I'm thinking, finally, for months now, I've been talking to my wife about, man, if I could only get into the back room. They have a death pile that's huge of donations that has just been sitting back there and growing. Because, they, again, they don't have a small store at this place. They don't have a big store either at this place. There's not a whole lot of room. So a lot of that stuff just piles up in the back because, you know, it just isn't any room out on the floor to, to bring it out. So I'm thinking, I always tell my wife, if only I could get to the back room, if only I could get to the Holy Grail, like if I could, I bet there's a, a bunch of good stuff back there. So finally, she, you know, she invites me back. Oh, come on back. She shows me a TV. She pulls it out. It's a smaller TV, maybe 19 inches or something. And it's got a DVD player built into the side. I just sold one of these like a month ago for almost a hundred bucks. And she, it's not the same brand, but a TV with a DVD player built in the side. She goes, I don't even know what this is. She's like, I think it's a monitor or something. And I, you know, obviously I could tell it was a TV. I said, oh, this is a TV. And I said, oh, look, there's a DVD player built into the side. She goes, oh, well, you test it for us. And I said, sure. I tested it out. I put a DVD in it. Turned on, worked fine, looked great. She goes, oh, that looks great. She goes, do you want to, you know, would you be interested in buying it? I said, sure. You know, I'll buy it off you for like 10 bucks. She goes, yeah, that sounds great. So she was really happy because she was just going to throw this in the dumpster. She was telling me another story about how they had like a big flat screen TV. They had $7 on. This must have been before I was shopping there. Because she's like, oh, we had seven, $7 on this and nobody would buy it. She's like, it tested, it worked. Nobody would buy it. She's like, I had to throw it away. So she threw away a flat screen TV. She was going to throw this away. So I can only imagine what that dumpster looks like. And I wish I would have known this months ago when I started reselling. But thankfully... I'm, I'm going to stop in there once a week now, like on Wednesday. She's going to keep a pile of stuff for me. And I'll be able to test some stuff. So this is this is, this is very good for me. So, yeah, those were, those were a few of the, the highs of the week. Um, the lows were we had a pretty, uh, probably the worst sales weekend that I've had in since July, I would say. I mean, I, I sold one item on Saturday. I sold one item on Sunday. <clears throat> I've sold more items on today than I did all weekend. So it was a, a pretty crappy sales weekend. And we had a couple of returns this week. Um, one was a Kindle that I sold in the last video. Um, the guy said he couldn't get his, like, I guess he couldn't get his account to link up and he couldn't get the Wi Fi to work. So, I mean, that wasn't a big deal. You know, just, you know, it is what it is. 
But the other one was a really nice printer that I had. It was brand new. I bought it from a yard sale. I think I sold this maybe it was a, a month ago. And I bought it from a yard sale for 10 bucks. It was brand new. Uh, the couple was like, oh, we never even took that out of the box. We never used it. It's brand new. It's a cool. It definitely was. You could you could see in the side where the handles were. You could see that it was it had never been taken out. But send it to this guy. It was a hundred and sixty dollar brand new printer. He sent me a message over the weekend saying, "Oh, it doesn't work." He's like, "I can't get the ink. It won't you know take the ink." He said that he called the Epson and they told him to go get new ink. So he went and bought eighty dollar new ink and tried to put it in there and it didn't work. So he's sending it back now this isn't going to be if i can get it to work this isn't going to be a total loss i think even pre-owned they sell for like 90 or 100 dollars. so i'll still be able to make some money but i'm paying 30 dollars to get it back paid 10 dollars for it initially so we'll, we'll see what happens and i'll update you guys about what's going on with that you know in other later videos but so you know like i said we had kind of a roller coaster of a week from very very high to you know returns are never fun and low sales are never fun so anyway um i want to show you guys a few of the things we had a pretty this weekend was pretty terrible for garage sales too there was lots of garage sales but i did not find very good stuff so here's a there's a couple of things i want to show you guys the these pair of shoes um came from i think last weekend maybe so not even this from these this weekend garage sales but this ha have a nice story with these shoes and then um one other item that I got this weekend that's pretty decent, but again, no great sales. You know, didn't definitely didn't fill the car up like I, I try to every weekend. I try to have one day where I just fill the car up to keep me basically keep you know to be able to do the numbers I want to do. I have to be able to source enough. So garage sales and garage sales are winding down. That's a huge that's a huge chunk of my sourcing. So I, I depend on the garage sales to be at least one day. I go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes on Sunday. I expect, I hope that one of those days we get some good stuff, but this weekend was just, it just wasn't happening. So anyway, here's a few of the things that I picked up um, throughout the week. One with these with these pair of shoes. Um, these are Cole Haan. Now, admittedly, I know nothing about shoes. I don't know name brands. I mean, if I see a pair of Nikes and they look nice, I can <coughs> kind of understand those. But, you know, other than that, I really don't know. But... Uh, I've been watching some videos because I want to expand my knowledge on in different categories. You know, the categories I normally do well in are video games, electronics, you know, toys, board games, things like that. Clothes, shoes, purses, things like that. I, jewelry, I know nothing about that stuff. So I'm trying to expand those categories and there's some really good YouTubers out there. And one of them I watch is uh, Tanya from uh, Thrifty Treasures. She sells a lot of jewelry and shoes and clothes and stuff. So I was watching one of her videos. Um, and she had mentioned the name Cole Haan. And the reason I like these type of videos, like what's sold on eBay and those kind of things, is because I, I hear names and then when I'm out at the garage sale, it kind of triggers in my brain, oh, I've heard them talk about this brand before. And then I'll, I'll decide, you know, if the price is right to take a chance or not. So I go to a yard sale and there was a huge pile of uh, stuff for a quarter, the lady said. Oh, everything in that pile is a quarter. And these shoes were in there. These are Cole Haan uh, wing tip chucka ankle boots for men, a good size, size 10. So we picked these up for a quarter and they cleaned up really nice, got some shoe polish and, sh and polished them up, look, made them look pretty good. And, uh, we're trying to sell them for fifty nine ninety five. So I got them listed for fifty nine ninety five. really good foot for a quarter. And like I said, just watching that video, um, just triggered, you know, something in my brain to say, Oh, Cole Haan is something I should, I didn't even look them up. I saw for a quarter. I mean, even if they're nothing, you know, it's a quarter. So, um, yeah, picked those up, I think, on Sunday last week. So, a nice little, hopefully, we'll, we'll sell those for fifty nine ninety five. which though that that type has sold around that price point, so there's no reason we shouldn't get that much. All right, this is the best find of the weekend. Um, like I said, again, another sl a slow week uh, weekend for uh, garage sales. This actually came from a rummage sale for a softball team. A softball team was having a rummage sale, and... Um, at the rummage sale, I guess whoever was holding the rummage sale, somebody had donated a bunch of ET stuff, like older ET. Stuff. I got some glasses. I got a, like a record, a vinyl record album from ET from the 80s, and then I got this talking uh, ET plush. This thing is uh, 24 inches tall, so two feet tall. Still had the tag on there. Um, they had two dollars on this, so two dollar 
um, ET, you know, and plush sells pretty well, and you know, it didn't have any stains, didn't you know, smell like smoke or anything, in pretty good condition. It's got electronics in it. You press his little hand, and his um, he he has says all the ET phrases, and his finger lights up, and his heart lights up. So, a pretty nice uh, collector's piece. Like I said, bought it for two bucks, and I've got it listed for eighty nine ninety five. So they've sold anywhere from sixty or seventy to all the way up to like one hundred and twenty. So I put it kind of in the middle, and hopefully we'll get that. So not bad. All right, now on to the section of what I sold on eBay this week. Like I said. 22 sales this week, an average week for me. Um, and I'll try to remember, I'll try to tell you guys where I bought it from, how much I bought bought it for, how long I had it, um, whether it was something my wife found or something that I found. And just try to give you as much details about the item as I can to help you guys uh, when you're out there sourcing as well. So we'll start first with some retail arbitrage. This came from... Um, the Elder Beerman closing sales, and I paid 60 cents for this. This is a watch box um, for a Belova watch, and we paid 60 cents. And I think I have about eight or nine of these. This particular one uh, was missing something in it. I, I can't remember. I think it was missing a piece, like another. It had like another instruction book for it or something that wasn't in there. So this particular one sold for 15.95 plus shipping. The other ones I think are selling for $17. So they're slow movers, but like I said, 60 cents. I just got them on the shelf there. I got a bunch of different brands. I got Belova, Seiko, um, what's it? Armani Exchange, which is, I've sold a couple of the Armani, Armani Exchange ones already. So we've, we've got a lot of them paid 60 cents for most of them and you know, good sellers, good flippers, slow moving, but you know, we'll sell these all day, you know, easy to ship. Most of these goes overseas too, which is weird. This one did not. So not bad. Not a bad flip. All right. This is a this is something I've never seen before. This is a discs uh, disc gear selector. It holds 120 CDs. Let me see if I show like a good picture of it. So you put the CDs in there, and then it's got a little pull out card where you can write, you know, CD one is whatever, CD two is whatever, and then you just basically kind of slide this little uh, lever across there to the number that CD you want. You press the button, it flips the thing open and pops the CD that you want out. So it holds 120 CDs. It's very interesting. It was really nice, kind of a, you know, fake you know, pleather type uh, exterior. It's very clean. I paid five bucks for this at St. Vincent de Paul, and we sold it for $34.95. And this did not take long at all. It took less than a week. It was probably three or four days before this sold, which I couldn't believe. But yeah, it just was weird. It's just something I'd never seen before. It was fun trying to figure it out at the store. Like, what is this thing? It looks cool, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Finally, I found one on eBay. I figured out what it was. So, yeah, very nice. <clears throat> this is a tailor-made adjustment tool. This was a white find. Came from a yard sale. Um, I walked right past this. This was inside of a tailor-made driver cover, which was brand new. This was down inside there. And they had a dollar on the, the driver cover, and this tool was inside there. And I, apparently I walked right past it because my wife walked to me like, you didn't want to look at this? And I said, oh, I didn't even see it. So this is the, the, the basically tailor-made clubs have like counterweights on the bottom and you need a special tool to like adjust the counterweights to, you know, if you're slicing the ball, you can make your, you know, hit the ball straight by adjusting these weights, um, things like that. So this is the special tool for that. So be on the lookout for this. Uh, this does sell, I, like I said, I paid a dollar for the club cover and this, so 50 cents into this, and we sold it for $9.95 plus shipping. And, you know, obviously it's a two pictures, it's small, it's easy. These are the ones I don't mind, like 50 cents, 10 bucks, easy flippers, easy pictures, easy shipping. I like these. I like these. I could do these sales all day long. So a, a nice find by the wife. All right, this is a Sony Handycam. Uh, a good sale this week. Sony Handycam. I bought this for 8 bucks at St. Vincent de Paul. Came with all the cords. You can see this is a nice little, this is a nice, light, nice little setup here. Get, came with extra cords. Came with the, the Sony strap there, which had never been used. Got a battery. Got the charger. The Sony Handycam. Just you know, what I did was when I first started reselling, I was getting these, but I didn't have a high eight. This is a high eight cam video camera, so I ordered a high video uh, tape to be able to like test this stuff fully because I had one at first I was like oh well I'll just sell it as untested and it didn't sell as untested so finally I was like well 
I've, I've found a few of these. I'll, I'll just buy the tape and I'll have the tape here to be able to test these things fully, record, fast forward, rewind, do all the functions. So I did all that. Once I did that with that other one, it sold immediately. And this one sold as well. Like I said, eight bucks and we sold this for $79.95 plus shipping. So a really nice flip. All right, this is a, a really good one. This came from the yard sale last weekend. Um, if you watched the last video, I talked about it a bit. Went to a yard sale. They had uh, an Xbox 360 out there, and it was extremely overpriced. I, I asked the dad, hey, you know, we were talking video games. He said, oh, I have a Game Boy player in, in my garage. This is a Nintendo Game Boy player. This hooks to the bottom of a GameCube and allows you to play Game Boy games. I think I showed this as like a... One of the nice things I picked up for the week, so well, it sold a few days after that. So um, he had the went in his garage. He found the the black part, the base part there, but they didn't have that disc. And I've never looked this up. I knew what it was, but I never looked up like the price of it. So I was thinking, oh, I think the Game Boy Player it would seem like the Game Boy Player would be the part that would be the expensive part, but really it's not. I think just that alone is twenty bucks. But the disc. That little disc is the, the expensive part of this combo. That's like a $55 or $60 disc for that. So he was like, oh, I don't think we have this disc. I was like, well, that's unfortunate. I looked it up on eBay. I'm like, oh, man, that's a lot for that disc. So I bought the Game Boy Player itself off of him for 5 bucks. Uh, the, the son said, oh, I have other video game stuff. He went inside, brought it out, brought out a ton of Wii games, uh, GameCube games, one of which sell, I'll show you guys later, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but one of the GameCube games sold, but he had really good titles on both the Wii and the GameCube, some really expensive stuff. So I bought this for five bucks, and he had, I think, 40 or 45 games on the Wii and the GameCube, a couple of Wii controllers. I asked him, well, how much do you want for all this? I was prepared to pay quite a bit because, like I said, there were some really nice titles. And he said, oh, how about 40 bucks? I couldn't get the money out of my pocket fast enough. I, you know, I was trying to, you know, keep calm and just say, yeah, that sounds like a fair price. So, got that stuff for 40 He was happy to move it because he was like, oh, I never play this stuff anymore. Just collecting dust in my room. He's like, actually, I was going to take these to GameStop on Monday and turn them in, you know, and GameStop doesn't give you nothing for them, so... I'm sure he got more money off me than he would have at GameStop. So it was a really nice score. I added a lot of uh, awesome um, titles to my collection, and I was able to sell a few things and get, get my money back. So this is one of the things that sold. Bought that black part for five bucks, and then that disc was included in the games. So we sold that for seventy nine ninety five plus shipping. So a really nice sale. All right, this is a um, manual for a game that I no longer have the game, but somehow I still have this manual. And this manual, I can't believe that. I, it's in, still in decent condition. Uh, this is a very rare game for Sega CD. So early 90s stuff. Um, the manual itself sold for $32.95. So I sold this for $32.95 plus shipping. Like I said, this has been through... I've moved probably four or five times since you know I had this. So somehow, magically, it's made it through all the moves. Ended up here. I was going through all my video game stuff. Found this manual. Like I said, don't have the disc anymore. The disc is a, a, a rare game. I wish I still had the game, but still somehow I had this manual. I was like, well, I'll sell this because another collector will pick this up and complete, you know, be happy to get this, be able to complete that and have that as a complete thing in their collection. So they're very happy to get it. Like I said, $32.95 plus shipping just for the manual. So, you know, free, I guess, to $32.95. All right, this is a Fitbit Zip. Be on the lookout for these. This was five bucks at a yard sale. This was pre-owned and still at pre-owned. It sold for $34.95. I've had two of these. I had one that was brand new and it sold for $60, like right away. And then I have I bought this. I saw this on the table. I was like, oh, I've sold, sold these before. But these little Fitbit Zip wireless activity trackers sell like hotcakes. Within a day I sold both of mine. So be on the lookout for that. Like I said, paid five bucks. $34.95 plus shipping for that. So a nice score. All right, this is a, a wife find. She got this off an auction site for, I think she paid 50 cents for this. And this is a stand-up mic from Logitech. It's like an older model, like a 2002 model. But this sold within a day. Well, actually this sold in like, I want to say like 15 minutes. I posted this and like I was posting other stuff and it's so I couldn't believe how quickly it sold. But this is, this is brand new. Um, you know, in the packaging, still in the original packaging. Like I said, I think she paid 50 cents for this at, on an auction site. We sold it for $34.95 plus shipping in 15 minutes. So a nice score by the wife. All right, 
this is a um, Survivor, the very first, I guess this is the first season of Survivor. And this was a dollar at St. Vincent de Paul. They're having um, a sale where you buy one DVD, you get the second DVD for a penny. Their DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff are $2 a piece. I bought another one and then I was just like, well, I need to find one more because I get it for a penny. And this is the one I picked up. The only reason I picked this up was because it was still sealed. So I was like, well, it's still sealed. I can sell it for something, I think. So, you know, pretty easy. You know, not much can go wrong with this. You know, I got $7.95 out of it. It was a buck. So, not too bad. All right, this was part of a, I think maybe a month ago, we were at a yard sale. We bought this um, Disney vanity, a uh, Little Mermaid vanity. The vanity itself is extremely expensive. It's like pre-owned. It's like $200 for this vanity. Little kid's vanity has all of these different parts on it, um, one of which is this lamp. So I guess when people have these, they lose, you know, all the different parts from it. So there was, I think, maybe 10 or 12 parts that I end up listing. listing. And we paid 7 bucks for the entire vanity. Had a stool. <coughs> had a stool with it. Um, so we sold this lamp for nine ninety five plus shipping. And we, and like I said, I have a bunch of other parts. There's like a fork, a dingle hopper. There's a hairbrush. There's a um, hair dryer. There's a, a, the stool itself sells for like 20 So if you, you know, keep an eye out for those Disney vanities there. Especially the Little Mermaid. When I found other ones like Cinderella. And they don't have a bunch of extra parts that could get lost. So people basically buy these to replace the parts that got broken or lost on their kids' uh, vanities. So... Sold this for $9.95 plus shipping. And like I said, I have a bunch of other parts to that. The vanity itself, I gave that to my niece. Um, she loves it. There's like a big mirror, like a light-up mirror on there. So she, she's like one and a half. So she just, you know, she loves that thing. Stand there and stares in the mirror and, you know, puts toys on and stuff. So she got, you know, I was able to give that to my niece. And then I was able to, you know, sell all the extra parts. And yeah, so it worked out for everybody. It was nice. A little $7 pickup. All right, this is a an official Sony PlayStation 1 um, controller, and I can't remember where the heck I got this from. It's been a, I've had this for a while, a month and a half maybe. Didn't pay more than a buck for it. I'm sure it was in like a bundle of PlayStation stuff, but got $12.95 plus shipping. This is the, the like clear red version, so a pretty nice PS1 controller. For $12.95 is what I sold it for, plus shipping. All right, this is a lot of books. Went to a yard sale. They had a huge box of books. Um, and I saw all these titles by the same person. Looks like a set. Um, paid five bucks for the whole box. And this is, we sold this for $34.95 plus uh, shipping. This went media mail. So like 15 pounds of books went media mail for like 10 bucks. <clears throat> so it was pretty nice. Maybe had it for a month or something like that. Not too bad. Don't mind selling books. Don't sell a whole lot of books. Don't mind selling them. All right, here's another phone system, guys. This was a, um, a really nice sale. Actually, sold, I had four of these, and I sold all four to the same person. As you can see there, it says four sold. Yeah, this guy bought all four of these. $7.95 a piece plus shipping. I think it ended up being like 60 bucks total with shipping and everything. So, like I said, I've been experimenting with phone systems, selling them as a whole system, or breaking them up into parts, selling the phone separate, the charger separate, things like that. This is one of those experiments. Um, working out pretty well so far. Had this for maybe a month and a half. And I think I paid five bucks for the whole set. And we sold all four phones for, like I said, I think the end up, it ended up being like 58 and some change um, after shipping and everything. So nearly 60 bucks. And he bought, again, per perfect. This is exactly how I want it to be. Had four listed. Same guy bought all four. That's beautiful. That's perfect. All right. Here's a camera I sold to retrospect. Um, paid, what did I pay for this? Five bucks maybe? Four bucks? Sold for $27.99 plus free shipping. So, easy flippers, couple of pictures, takes 15 minutes, you post it 15 minutes later, they buy it, so. Sold a ton of Polaroids to Retrospect, so that, that's been working out nice. Like I said, I'll pay anywhere between three and five bucks um, for these. It's I saw one at the yard sale this week and she wanted $10 for it. And even at ten dollars, I was like, "Well, I can still make like seven or eight bucks, and it's really easy." I didn't even. I and eventually, I just left it. But I was, and then I was like driving, thinking, "Like, should I be buying these for ten dollars?" Like I said, it's very, very quick flips, very easy. A couple of pictures, easy to ship. I mean, 
positive feedback every time. So there's a lot of positives to buying these, even at $10. You'll make seven or eight bucks after fees and shipping. I don't know. Maybe I should start buying them for 10 bucks or less. But I haven't, I, the most I think I've paid was like seven bucks. So, all right. This is a Sony D, uh, DVD VCR that I bought for a dollar at a church rummage sale. I bought that, I think, last weekend at a church rummage sale. Got some really nice stuff at that sale. I think I paid, I thought, I think I got five items and I paid five bucks total. So, this is one of those items. Didn't have, it didn't have a uh, remote, but it still sold for $29.95 plus shipping. And this, um, the guy who always drop ship, he's drop shipped three DVD VCR combos now. I bought this one as well, so that's fine. Haven't had any issues with the other two that he bought, so hopefully we have no issues with these. But tested it, as you can see there, I put a picture of it. Tested, worked good. I think I tested, so the day I tested these, it's a funny story. The day I tested these, I tested seven DVD VCR players. Didn't pay more than five bucks for any of them. Like I said, a dollar for this one. Out of the seven, two actually worked so if you're gonna get if you're gonna buy these and you're gonna you're gonna mess around with these it's important to test them because a lot of the times like i said two out of seven worked and that's i mean usually the you know the the percentages are higher but this was a pretty bad day for testing dvd vcrs for me so this was one of the ones that worked it actually sold so you know I, i've been contemplating do i still want to sell these or not like i said if they have the remote I'll pick them up because usually the remotes sell separate and sell for decent money. And if they work, I mean, you know, these will sell for good money. But I haven't decided yet, but <laughs> two out of seven is not very good odds. So anyway. All right, this is a little pack of micro cassettes, Still sealed, brand new. Paid a dollar for these. I had these for a long time. A couple of months. Paid a buck for these at St. Vincent de Paul. And we sold them finally. Actually, they I relisted them. And I guess that triggered somebody because it sat there for a month. Didn't sell. I relisted it. And like 10 minutes after I relisted it, it sold for $4.95 plus shipping. So, I mean, again, I like I like easy, you know, easy stuff like this. I paid a buck. I only made $4.95, you know, minus fees and stuff. So I'm only going to make a few bucks. But, I mean, it's, so, it's just so easy. You know, it's just... An easy ship. I mean, I don't know. All right, here is one of the games that I bought. Another. This was another game I bought from that guy that had like forty game, forty or forty-five games. I paid uh, forty bucks total for it. I sold that earlier. That Game Boy Player. This is another one of the games that was in there. This is Mario Party Four for the Nintendo GameCube. This was complete in box with the manual. The disc was in a good shape. So this sold for thirty-seven ninety-five plus shipping. So this was a nice flip. Um, I actually have this game for GameCube already, so this was my second copy of it, so I sold this. And like I said, $37.95 plus shipping, and I have a buck into this, maybe? So, not too shabby. Uh, this is a Nintendo Wii controller I bought. I got two of these pink ones. This one came out of a box I got from Ar Salvation Army. It had, this was a decent deal, it had uh, a Nintendo Wii console in it that I've already sold for uh, 25 bucks. so I paid 25 bucks for the whole box. And the console itself sold for 25 so I got my 25 back. Now, the other stuff that I had in there was cords, and it had, I think, four controllers in there, so that was really nice. One of which was this pink one, sold it for $13.95 plus shipping, took about six weeks to sell. So this is just the profit part of, of that particular bundle. Like I said, sold the system already in a past video to recoup the 25 bucks, and then everything else that's in the box is basically extra and, and your profits. That's the way I look at it. I bought another Wii this weekend for 20 bucks. Like I said, I'll sell that, that console for 25. It had two controllers, some cords. Uh, it had one game with it, which was a nice game. So that's all the profit of it. I'll sell the console, make the money back. So this, that's the way I kind of look at the Wiis. It's just the console only. Sell so only the console, no cords, no controllers, no games. The console only. And then, you know, make 25 bucks plus shipping. And then the rest of it is just the profit part of it. And this is the profit part of that particular bundle. $13.95 plus shipping. Like I said, it took about six weeks on it, and I have another one of those. All right, this sold um, today. This is, a again, another uh, Xbox 360 console only. Like I said, don't sell. I don't sell these with cords or anything. Just, you know, I test them, sell them console only. I got $49.95 plus shipping. This was part of the bundle that I... Where did I get this from? Um, to be honest, I don't remember where I got this from. Had this for a while 
over a month. Um, but you know, I'm not sure how much I paid for this, but it wouldn't have been more than five bucks, maybe ten bucks, maybe. Um, I'm sure this was. I usually buy lots of. Oh, I know where I got this. So I got this from a yard sale. I remember now. The guy had had a box full of Xbox stuff. It had nine games, two controllers, and the system, and he wanted thirty bucks for it. And I said, I'll give you ten. And he said twenty. And I said, Well, how about fifteen? And he said, Fine. So I got the whole box for fifteen. I knew I could sell the console. So we sold the console for forty nine ninety five plus free shipping on these. So con again, console only, no cords or anything. Forty nine ninety five plus shipping. So fifteen bucks for the whole box. And like I said, I had nine games and a bunch of controllers or two controllers, nine games. So I put most of those games into my collection. Sold the console, and made the money back. So forty nine ninety five plus shipping. Now. As always, I hold the best uh, sales of the week till the end. We had three uh, pretty nice ones here. One really nice, really, really nice one, and a couple of nice ones. And they have nice stories with them, so here goes. All right. This is a Lego Harry Potter Hungarian Horntail Dragon. So last Sunday, um, I went to a yard sale. Now, this particular Sunday, I, was, I try to take Sundays off. Like I said, I work on eBay stuff seven days a week, all the time. I try to take Sunday off to, like, you know, watch football, watch fantasy football shows and stuff. Just kind of a relaxed day. And then after football's over, then I, like, list and kind of organize. So this particular Sunday, I was laying in bed, couldn't sleep, scrolling through, like, yard sales. I was like, well, if there's a yard sale that sticks out at me, I'll go to it. Got these from a yard sale that was, like, three streets away and it was a sunday only sale and it, all it had listed was a, just a bunch of toys like pictures of toys so i go there they had a huge bin i mean a massive bin full of uh legos and the, the lady said oh I, I spent thousands of dollars on these legos my son used to these are like lego sets harry potter sets from like i want to say maybe the early 2000s 2004 2005 somewhere in there most of them but she goes, oh, you know, my, my kid doesn't play with them anymore. We're moving. I don't want to haul these around. Um, so, you know, she's like, I'm looking to sell them. I said, well, you know, I had it and I had a video game and some other snow globe or something. And I said, well, what do you want for, all you know, the Legos and this? And she said, you know, how about 20 bucks? And I said, well, how about 15? She said, sure. So I paid about 10 bucks for a giant tub of Legos and like I said, most of it's Harry Potter stuff, and it's a ton of Harry Potter uh, minifigures. So, so it was a lot of work to get this together. But this was in that. This this was in that bin. This is just one of them. I think I've posted about fifteen or twenty different uh, Harry Potter minifigures. Uh, this was the most expensive piece that was in there. Sold this for sixty nine ninety five plus shipping. Took maybe two or three days to sell. So this was a really really nice flip. And like I said, there's still tons of good tons of uh of these minifigures that i still haven't processed yet the little harry potter figures i've got a bunch of those some of them like i said 15 or 20 of them i've actually processed it was a lot of work because you know they were all mixed together in this huge bin so i had to dump the bin out sort you know all the basically minifigure parts hair and head body parts weapons wands you know try to put all these things back together so it was like two or three days of nothing but processing Harry Potter Lego stuff. And I still have a bunch more to do. But I got a bunch of really good listings out of it. Like I said, 10 bucks for the whole uh, bin. So that was really, really nice pickup. Sold this for $69.95 plus shipping. And I sold another one. I guess I didn't put it in this video for some reason. But I'll put it in the next video. I sold another Harry Potter figure for $29.95 plus shipping. I somehow didn't make it into this. But uh, I'll show it in the next video. But... Yeah, $69.95 plus shipping, and then I sold that other one for $29.95. So we made $100 off two sales of these Legos already. And like I said, I got a bunch more to go, so it could be a really, really nice profit on that. But again, a lot of work because I've sorted through this bin of Legos three or four times to get, you know, I find, oh, I'm missing this part. I go through, find it, dump all the Legos back in, sort through it again. It's been, it's been a lot of work, but the profit is definitely worth it. All right, this is the, the second nicest sale i had this week this is a 1999 audiovox rampage um, radio and cassette player for your car it also um i showed this in the last video as one of the nice pickups of the week um, but this also controls the like back in the day in the 90s you had your cd player like if you had like a multi multiple cd player it was in the in the trunk and this controls 
that particular CD player that would be in your trunk, the CD changer in your trunk. So that's what this is. Like I said, audio box rampage. Got these at a, a yard sale. I bought, I bought two of them. They were two bucks a piece. These had never been opened, never been installed. Um, they were still in their original packaging. This is one of the ones with the uh, faceplate. You could remove the faceplate and it had the little uh, it has a little box for the faceplate that you would like put in your purse or your pocket. So nobody, I guess, stole your faceplate off your CD player. That's one of those. Sold this for ninety nine ninety five um, plus shipping. So uh, two dollars into one hundred dollars. This is, this is a great flip. And like I said, I have one more of these. So I, you know, that's great. I mean, I'm. I don't know much else to say about that. That's just a great sale. All right, the best sale of the week. Uh, shout out to the wife. This was a wife find. She got this from Goodwill. She is a travel nurse. So she was um, working a couple hours from her house. She stays at a hotel. Well, when she's not working or she has a few hours, she'll stop by the Goodwill to see what's going on over there. She found this at the Goodwill. This is a Revo Styler uh, rotating hairbrush from the early 2000s. This was still brand new in the packaging never been used she paid ten dollars for this this was actually the vhs version you can see the vhs tape there this was the v there's a dvd version that came out after the vhs version but this is the vhs version so even an older model and this sold for 179.95 plus shipping i think it ended up being an even 200 dollars for this like i said she paid 10 bucks for this at the goodwill so just a really, really nice flip. And a shout out to the wife. She finally got one. So anyway, that's it for this week, guys. Um, again, hopefully you guys had a great week of sales and sourcing. Um, just a, a few announcements. One, in a couple of days, I'm going to be putting out another video. Um, it's basically going to be the September recap uh, for every month. I put out a video basically stating what my goals were for the past month, what like how many sales we did how many items we sold how much money we made the different sales that i made in the different categories i'll show you guys a few of my best sales i'll show you guys a few of my worst sales and we basically just talk finances and numbers things like that you guys can kind of see the growth uh, from where we started in july to where we're at now so in a couple of days i'll put out a september recap video like i said we'll just go over kind of the numbers here at mat retail so be on the lookout for that in a couple of days. And then I'm working on securing a, I want to get like a GoPro and like a chest cam so that I can record while I'm out of the thrift stores, out of the garage sales. I really like those kind of videos. And I want to do some other videos besides just what's sold on eBay videos. So for now, that's all I've been doing. And then, you know, we'll do our, rec uh, our monthly recap videos. But I do want to put out some kind of live, you know, some kind of like footage of me out at the garage sales. And then you guys can see kind of how I work when I'm out there and the kind of deals I'm making, things like that. So I'm working on getting a GoPro and a chest cam. Um, so hopefully soon we'll see some videos like that. But anyway, again, thanks to everybody who's uh, watched, commented, subscribed. Really appreciate it. We're getting close to 100 subscribers. That's great. I can't believe it that we're there already, but I appreciate everybody. Thank you very much. Have a great week of sourcing and sales and i will see you in the next video thanks